Hi everyone, it's Pastor Wagner. This is my weekly video blog. Today I'm continuing this little series called Answers to So-Called Arminian Verses, and we've covered verses like John 3.16 and 1 John 2 and verse 2, Romans 10 and verse 9, and now I want to cover John 1 and verse 12, which is a, a common verse that Arminians use to try to prove that belief makes you a son of God. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, when you first look at this verse, it would sort of seem like that, that as many as received him, the ones that received him and believed on him, then he gave them power after that to become the sons of God. But there's a problem with that. One of the major problems with that is the rest of the sentence. That's that's an issue. We'll get into that in just a second. Does this verse say that, that, that belief makes a person a son of God? No, it doesn't say that, and I will show you why. The first part of the verse says that to those who received Christ, received is past tense, right? To those who received Christ or received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Gave is also past tense. So you have people receiving him and being given power to become the sons of God. Received and gave are both both past tense. So just those verses, or just if you just take that part, that verse, that part of the sentence, it's not even a complete sentence. If you just take that part of the sentence, you couldn't prove which came first, the receiving or the becoming the sons of God, because they're both in the past tense. Just because one is said before the other doesn't necessarily mean that it precedes the other. I could say those who drove to school, their parents bought them cars. Well, obviously, the parents bought them cars before they could drive to school. So just because I said they drove to school and their parents bought them cars doesn't mean that they drove to school first in order for, them parent, for their parents to buy them cars, you see. So if both things are in the past tense, we have to look at maybe the rest of the sentence, that would always help, of course, or a comparative study to, sit, to figure out which one came first, the receiving or the being given power to become the sons of God. Now the answer, as I've alluded to, to this conundrum is to simply read the rest of the sentence, read the next verse. And this is the problem with many false positions out there. They take one verse, out of context, a lot of times it's not even a whole sentence, and they come up with some scheme of interpretation based on part of the ver part of a sentence or part of a verse or something like that, and that is the problem with this one. Let's just read, I'm going to read John 1, 12, and 13 together now and get the whole sentence. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now the second verse gives us some more information here, and this is going to clear up this so-called uh, problem, or the, this, <laughs> the, this verse that Arminians think is a problem for sovereign grace, I'll put it that way. Verses 12 and 13 are one sentence, and they describe the relationship between belief and regeneration, becoming a son of God, that, that is, regeneration. It uses two different clauses to show this, and those two different clauses are equated by the word even. Let me read it to you again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. There's the first clause that, that shows a relationship between belief and regeneration. Now here's the second clause that explains the first clause. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Two clauses, and they are equated by the word even. Even is when it's prefixed to a subject, object, or predicate, or to the expression of a qualifying circumstance, it means to emphasize its identity. It is serving to introduce an apexegesis, apexegesis, namely, that is, or which means namely or that is to say. So whenever you see the word even used in this, in this context, it means namely, like it's going to describe what comes next, or that is to say, I'm reiterating what was already said. 
Let me just give you one example. In Matthew 23 and verse 10, it says, Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. You see how even is used in the same exact way? One is your master, and then he's going to describe, okay, let me reiterate what I'm saying, who the master is, even Christ. So it's the same way in this verse, when it says, To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born of God. You see, the two, the two clauses are equated by the word even. So therefore, them that believe on his name, which were born of God, are them who received him to whom he gave power to become the sons of God. This is the same group, okay? Now, verse 13 is going to help us out because when we look at the grammar of it, we're going to see that different tenses are used and we can figure out exactly which came first, the belief or the regeneration. Now, whereas received, the word received, and the word gave are both in the past tense and don't in themselves state which happened first, on the other hand, believe is present tense, and were born, that phrase were born, is a passive voice past participle construction, which means that they were born before, they were born of God before they believed. Believe is, pa is present tense, pardon me, were born is in the past. You see? So the believing comes after the being born. Now this makes sense to anybody that just thinks about it. Can you do anything before you're born? You know, could, could, you, could you speak before you were born naturally? Did you ask your parents to be born? Did you say, hey, mom and dad, I'd like to be born now. I'd like to be conceived. No. Your parents made the, made the decision. Your parents caused you to be born. And once you were, were born, then you could think, talk reason, walk, eat. You can do all the things that human beings do once you are born. It's the same way spiritually. Once you are born of God and once you are regenerated, then you can do spiritual things like believe, repent, be baptized, obey God, things like that. It works the same way. Therefore, as many as received Christ were given the power to become the sons of God prior to receiving him. You see that? Because it says, even them which believe on his name, which were born of God. You see, they were born of God before they believed, because were born comes before the present tense believing. You see it? This agrees perfectly with other scriptures which declare that regeneration, or passing from death unto life, or being born of God, all three phrases meaning the same thing, that, that those things, regeneration that is, precedes belief. Let me give you a couple of verses that just state that fact, that regeneration, being born of God, precedes belief. And it has to precede belief. How can you believe when you're dead? The Bible says that we, before we're saved, we're dead in trespasses and in sins. Ephesians 2.1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Dead people don't believe or understand the gospel or obey the gospel or do any such thing. Dead people don't do anything and spiritually dead people don't do anything spiritual, you see? John 5 and verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. He that heareth presently and believeth presently hath everlasting life presently, if you hear and believe, you already have eternal life. And why do you have? Why do you already have eternal life? Because you are born of God. He is passed from death unto life. The person that presently hears and believes is passed. That's present perfect tense. That's a completed tense. He is already passed from death unto life. That's why he can hear and believe. John 5 and verse 1 says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You see, you don't get born of God by believing that Jesus is the Christ. You manifest that you are born of God. God makes you born first, regenerates you, takes that old dead spirit and gives you a new spirit capable of believing the gospel, capable of receiving spiritual things. And whenever you believe that Jesus is the Christ, you are showing the evidence that you are born of God, that Jesus changed your inward nature and gave you the ability to believe in him. 
So rather than teaching that belief causes one to be a son of God, John 1, 12 and 13 instead teaches that belief is caused by God making one a son of God. Belief isn't the cause, belief is the effect. Belief shows that God caused you to be able to believe. You see, it's the, it's the evidence, it's not the cause. In other words, those who receive Jesus Christ by faith show the evidence that God through his power made them his sons, which enabled them to believe. Let's just look at the text one more time. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, which came first, the receiving or the believing? The receiving, or I'm sorry, not the receiving. Which came first, the receiving or the becoming the sons of God? Clearly, the coming, becoming the sons of God came first, which gave them the ability to receive him. And the, when they received him, they showed forth the evidence that God had made them the sons of God through his power. So, thanks for listening. Uh, if you want to learn more about this verse or uh, 150-some other verses uh, like this one, I've written a book called Problem Text for Sovereign Grace. It's actually just taken from an outline on a series that I did, which took about a year and a half, where I went through in a Bible study series and covered every single verse that I could find in the New Testament that Arminians use to try to prove Arminianism, whether that means to believe and, and, and get eternal life, or whether that means you can lose your eternal life, or you're somehow saved by your works, or any verses that, that seem to teach anything like that. I went through systematically, uh, verse by verse, and gave the proper biblical interpretation for that. And you can find that in the comments section or in the description of the video. I'll leave a link where you can find and get a copy of that book if you would like. So thanks for listening, and next week I will cover, Lord willing, uh, 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4. I was going to cover Ephesians 2.8. And I realized that I've already done a video on Ephesians 2.8 a while back, so I'm not going to include that in this series. Anyway, I will talk to you again next week, Lord willing. Thanks for listening.